Welcome everyone. Today we have a special card video on the theater mechanics of the special tower defense event that just became available in the game. As you can see over here, I have defeated this once and I actually failed once. So there is actually a big trap or like something you need to be careful in this particular tower defense. Because each time you play, it costs one letter. And if you quit the game, you actually lose everything you had in the game. So you don't get any reward. Now, because the focus of this particular video are the major mistakes I made, I want you guys to avoid. So we're going to go on to that mistakes first. Now I'm going through some of the general tips and also concepts I have with the tower defense and what I learned from the two attempts I had. So the first part, guys, will focus on what I made with mistakes so you guys can avoid it. The second part, I'll go through the tips and also guides for you guys. And notice over here, I've been upgrading my towers to make them extra stronger. And I've been upgrading my pile and hydro towers for now. I've gotten all of them to level 3 for now. Now before we talk about the tower building, it is quite important to look at the team you have with you because each of the members can also interrupt the enemies, can cast special effects and also can debuff enemies. So if I have someone over here you can see on my first one, I don't have Hydro, I don't have Quiro, which is the best combination. Now if we come over to this section, you can see on the second team, I had Barbara, I had Chunyang on the team. And what this allows me to do is, this allows me to have the perma freeze effect. So I can have Brabus E spell and also Chuyang's E spell to cast a perma freeze. And also during the time, notice that while I'm fighting, I can also be building. This is quite important. As you gain points from killing enemies, you can build more towers. And this allows you to defend as you build. You don't have to wait for the building stage to be building. And this is essential. Now here comes the biggest trap I was going to talk to you guys about and it's really fortunate we get to see it this time. So notice how I have a few of the Hydro Towers and previously after my first run, I'll show you guys over here, I have leveled up two of my towers. I decided to level up my Hydro Tower, I decided to level up my Quiro Tower. So sorry, I decided to level up the Hydro Tower and also the Pyro Tower. So I leveled up two towers and those towers initially they will cost 100. After getting them to level 3, they will cost 140. So my towers are costing a little more as I level them. And that's not all. So I want to show you guys over here what happens. And over here, this is what I mean by the biggest trap in the game. Notice the Frico. We do not know what the special effect will be unless you select them. And as you can see over here, because I went for the Hydro Tower level 3, I thought I want the Hydro Tower with increased damage. And notice it cost me 200 of my points. Not only this cost a lot of points, which I won't have points to build towers, and let's have a look what happens when I select the Fickle. I select it with only 2 seconds spare, and then this worst effect came in. So this is when you don't get any points for the next round, for the entire round, for the next round, for round 2. And on top of that, I spent 200 points on this. So what that means is, for the entirety of the next round, I will get no points. And this means, you know, currently we're in level 2. And once I get to wave 3, I will not have any points to build any towers for, for wave 3. So this is tremendously bad for my tower defense. And not only that, notice not getting any points from the monsters, I also made a mistake for building my towers differently. Because I ignored the fact there was actually two waypoints. I was like, how are those monsters coming? So notice there was two waypoints for different entries. You must make sure you build on the intersections. Over here, I was being a little silly. I actually did not build on the intersections. So here is the intersection, and behind me there was an intersection. I built right in front of the gate. It worked initially, because I thought there was only one gate. There was another gate. So notice my two mistakes combined. The first mistake was that I picked the one, which I didn't know, with the debuff that I don't get any points. The second mistake is I no longer get any points and I cannot build more towers. So the waypoint that is on this side will continuously to leak monsters because I cannot stop them. So this is tremendously compounding mistake. And on top of that, I'll show you guys my final mistake. I decide to savage some towers by selling some of my towers to try to build behind me. So because I made the mistake of building here, I'm trying my best to stop them, but I can't because my towers are too far away, right? So notice my monster escaping will have five monsters escaping. So I continue to have the monster escaping because I don't have any points and I can't build correctly. And, and although that I was able to pass stage 2, remember that I did not get any points for stage 2 because of my bad mistake of picking the choice. And stage 3, I did not 
maintain or did not retain enough points to purchase any of the special upgrades. So those upgrades are safe. This one will always have a potential debuff. So be careful with those. And also keep in mind, those upgrades can cost a lot. So those might not be the best upgrades to go for. And here I don't have any points. And here's my final mistake. I want to dismantle, dismantle this particular tower because it was built miscorrectly. And notice it costs 140 to buy it. It costs 28. It gives me 28 back. So I thought I tried. I've already lost the fight. <laughs> so I only have 28 points for wave 3. So I have completely lost my second attempt because, you know, I upgrade my tower too much. They cost too much. I picked the wrong debuffs. They actually stopped me from getting points. And finally, I did not build correctly. And those are compounding mistakes which can be very crucial. But notice I did have a few things correct. I have characters of different elements. I can perma freeze enemies. I can create the melt synergy. I can create the electrifying synergy with Lisa. So all of my four stars have a really good power of debuffing enemies. And those are still very powerful. Now on the topic of mistakes, there's a few more mistakes I want to share with you guys. The first one is, if you fall down the gap guys, you will die. And this might take some time for you to respawn. I know it's quite trivial, but you really don't want to waste your time during the tower defense to fall down. The second defense or second mistake I want to share again with you guys is that if you activate those devices, they actually cost points. I was testing this for science, but this stage cost me one Latin. And to test this one for science, notice here, once you interact with this, it will say it will cost 40 points. And I did not read this one, so I spent 40 points to get a wind current, which have no apparent use. So notice I start a fight with only 360 points, and at the start I was like, why do I have 360? I thought I start with 400. So there are small mistakes you can make because we don't know the scarcity of the resource, and we can be building things incorrectly, been dying, and also been wasting a little more points. We also talk about if you sell towers, you don't get much back. So try to not think about selling towers, but rather building more towers, more strategically in the intersection. Now coming to some of the tips with the tower defense, notice that we can have the special characters like Xiaoling, like you know, Chunyang, who can be very effective. If we have Chunyang and Barbara previously, as you saw, I can primary freeze enemies. Over here, I try Sakura's to increase the damage taken with Venomism, but I don't think I feel a lot from that. So I don't think having a Nemo character is that worth it. Having a 4 star character or any character with multiple procking of the E spell is essential. Lisa's attacks give us electrifying effect, you know, Shaolin can puff the fire onto enemies, Chion can debuff them and also interrupt enemies. Sometimes enemies will run especially fast, and during those times, you want to knock them up with a character. Whether it's E spell, whether it's Chion, you want to be casting your spells. I noticed for the first time I was playing, I was building correctly. I was building at the intersections. And also, you know, I'm still tempting with myself with the special Frickle. Let's have a look what Frickles we have this time. The first Frickle I had was No One Can Escape. The second Frickle is No One Can Escape. I was like, hey, that's not hard. I'll show you guys the third Frickle as well. Now, as we come to the next Frickle and also the next possible mistake I made. So over here, notice there is a special function called the Fearless. This one will give you additional points which is used to purchase towers, those are not for you to go to the event shop. Those are still in the particular stage of the tower defense for you to purchase towers and also, you know, more towers. So those points are not essential. But the downside is this particular monster make it especially hard. And of course, guys, just for science, I tested out to pick the special hard one. And guess what? This particular Hilly Troll, the big daddy Hilly Troll, just worked past all my towers. Because my towers are not upgraded, I did not have enough points, I could not stop the monster, and he just worked freely through my towers. Not only did he take a lot of the focus fire from my existing towers, he also led to potential leaking because he was too strong. He doesn't cost any points to purchase, but I did not earn anything. So I actually lost one leak because of him. I could have no leak if I did not pick him. So I don't recommend picking a fearless at the early stage of the tower defense. When you have higher level towers and more solid defense, you can go for those. But at early stage, if you do leak a monster, you no longer get a special achievement for the no leakage. So this one can be extra bad. And also notice I'm trying to defend at the end now. I don't go to the front. I'm trying to stop monsters that are leaking. You can always reveal them in the monster stage. So while the monsters are running around, if you see a leakage, you can build in front of them. 
and this is a really good idea. And one thing I want to focus with you guys is notice there are some monsters that runs especially fast. And when those guys that runs fast, the towers actually miss because they shoot projectiles. This is when you want to freeze them. This is when you to interrupt them. You want to stop them in their tracks so that towers can deal damage to them. And that's why I keep hitting them. Notice as I'm hitting monsters, they are interrupted, they cannot move, and this allows my towers to deal more damage. Otherwise my towers miss if they run too fast. Now coming to our next tip, we mentioned earlier about countering enemies. Notice that you get to see what enemy is coming on the next wave, and we can see pile majors. And I've been building, you know, pile towers, so I need to transition my towers into hydro towers to counter them. So that's why I went for the hydro tower defense. And also guys, I did not go for the fearless for the ruin hunter, because I couldn't even beat the big heliotrop, let alone the ruin hunter, so I skipped this one. And also, you don't need those particular sigils for the last round. Because you might get additional sigils, but they cannot be used for any building because I actually have too much of the points at the end of the round. So here, notice I'm fighting pile majors. I'm actually picking the hydro tower defense, and this allows me to start building, you know, hydro towers because I know the pile majors are coming. And as, as you can see over here, the pile majors are quite solid. And as you fight them, you realize, you know, my pile towers don't do much. But once you break the shield, they will actually start to fall down. And luckily, my Hydro Towers that are upgraded eventually worked. One thing to notice is that while you're building, you can only have 14 towers maximum for now, for my stage. So what that means is, if you have enemies that went past your first initial towers, and you don't have any particular spots to build, you can sell the towers at the front if you have the surplus of the points to build. So here I'm trying to build, I cannot build. What I can do is, I can sell those towers and no longer useful, I can start build. But I didn't think of that during that time. I was like, no, 14 out of 14, I can't build. Notice at this stage, if I was to sell towers, I can build more towers. And this can be really helpful. And of course, you want to be debuffing enemies just to slow them down and also use the towers correctly. Elemental counters are essential. And if you guys have trouble with those, we'll go further with elemental counters. And as you can see, if you correctly pass a particular challenge, you will get points for a number of things. And sometimes not leaking monsters and having high multipliers means you get more points in the event shop, which is very useful in purchasing your 4 stars and lots of items. Now if you found this video helpful, make sure you subscribe and also turn the little bell on for the latest news. I'll be looking towards to make more builds, guides, tips and news and event updates for us as we come further into the game. And as always, I wish you guys the best of luck with catching and have the most fun in exploring this wonderful world.